Hey YouTube, we're back inside the pickle jar. It's the wheel deal. We're wheelie doing this. It's time to get wheel. In this week's episode, I admire a water bottle. Oh man, that's a nice one. Yeah, I dig that. My wife hits me with a hard no. Dear? Yeah? What do you think about another RC, you know, for testing purposes? No. What about you? She also says no. And I make a mess of the driveway. I made a mess. So what is Get Wheel? Is it where we review neat water bottles from Galaxy's Edge? No, that's not what it is. It's where we test your designs, my designs, and Thingiverse designs against each other on four factors. The first being ease of printing. The second, durability. Does it hold together? The third is friction. Does it generate enough traction to function as a wheel? The fourth being practicality, which is kind of a combination of all of those things. And we're probably going to bash it around and see how they hold up. How are we going to do this? Well, if you look down in the description, there is going to be a few links. The links are going to be to this twill that I designed for you guys to use as a template, as well as you'll see in my creations. There is a rim that looks awfully similar to this, but it does not have any treads and that will be used for you to design a tire around um, and submit the tire and I will just slide it on top and glue it. And we will test it that way. Description will also contain the specifications for you to design one on your own if you so choose. You might be thinking, eh, I don't know, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, it's not too bad. Check out this clip on how I designed this wheel. Once you've got your wheel or wheels, you can head on over to getwheelsubs at gmail.com to submit your STL, your object file, your link to such, maybe on Thingiverse. And I will take that file, I will throw it on my printer, and we will put it on the RC and test it out. Two submissions a week I think would be sufficient. And we'll be printing those in TPU for the tires, 85A hardness, and the rims will be printed in PLA unless you say otherwise if it's a twill and it's integrated in tpu then we will print it exactly how you want it to be printed just make sure that you're specific our test vehicle will be modified traxxas rustler we will be using the same motor and, and speed controller combo uh, a fully charged battery every time we change a set of tires uh, the same battery rather and we'll be using the same gear ratio so that way there is no change. Um, I will not be putting a body on this. This is merely just for testing purposes and I don't think we're going to be rolling it over. Obviously we have to measure all this stuff. So we have our digital fishing scale that we're going to use to measure the frictional force in pounds. And naturally our mass times gravity gives us our weight, which is, well, measured by wet weighing it. We'll be using that to calculate the coefficient of friction. First, we need to take a baseline measurement. That baseline measurement will be based on the coefficient of friction and performance of these uh, knockoff plastic beadlock tires that I scored on Banggood for like 40 bucks for this set. So the way this works is we measure the kinetic friction, that's the tire is moving between the road and the tire. And we record that in pounds based on what the scale reads in this case. We got 6.36 pounds of kinetic frictional force, and we divide that by the weight of the vehicle, 
which was 4.25 pounds. That gives us a kinetic coefficient of kinetic friction of 1.5. That's unitless because they are both in pounds. And you divide those and all well, the units cancel out. There are a few passes on grass and on the pavement. It's easy to tell that these are not a bad tire for the price and a good baseline for our tests. Now that we've got all our measurements, we can throw these puppies on and do the same thing. So I slowed this one down quite a lot so you can see just how much vibration there was in the rear axle. Now I'm not sure if that's the natural harmonics of this specific tread um, against the pavement or if it's due to being unbalanced and I would probably attribute that to the infill if that's the case. I did not balance these tires or attempt to balance them even at all so I think that might be something that we have to do going forward. Um, if it's the harmonics, I did get in the 85A Shore Hardness plastic, and I think, or TPU rather, and I think we'll reprint these tires and get another baseline for these tires. They did print really well, actually. Um, I know my model on Thingiverse says print with no infill, but I actually did 90 degrees on the infill, so that way I could get the um, 90 degree overhang there in the center, but they came out very nice minus again my assumption that the infill is asymmetrical and causing some balancing issues. Unfortunately they were pretty much uncontrollable and I think if I had two more on the front I'd still be in the same place um, with a rear wheel drive vehicle like this. It may have been a little more fun to drive, I may have been able to control the drifts a little more. Um, Off-road however, again they were basically useless. I could go in reverse, but I would still get stuck. This is tall grass, it is St. Augustine grass, so um, you really do need some beef on your tread to get through this. And it was probably not the best place to test it, but I think these uh, extreme conditions are really what we're, we're after. I had had enough of retrieving the truck from the grass, so we moved on over to this rubber style walking track and it performed about as well as you'd expect. Um, it was still uncontrollable, but it was a little more controllable because it's a rubber on rubber surface, uh, that being the tire and the, the road. So we moved on over to this uh, construction joint gone wrong, or this frost heave rather, and started doing some donuts in hopes we could tear these tires off. They did last quite some time, so we'll uh, slow it down here and you can watch it tear itself off the rear end. All right, so it turns out that these BOA ones that I designed, uh, would it be that it's uh, 95A shore hardness instead of the 85A that I'm hoping it's going to come in tomorrow is what's playing the factor or it's just a poor design. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna blame the plastic on this one um, and say that it was just too tough. But as you can tell, these were pretty much useless other than a placeholder for a normal wheel. Um, they performed pretty well in reverse. We might print two more and throw it on the Stampede 4x4 and see if we can do some drifting with them because I think these would be a nice drift tire. Coming in at 0 0.59, 0 0.6 coefficient of friction uh, compared to, what was it, uh, 1.5 was the coefficient of friction on the, the baseline. In any event, I need to get back to the drawing board. I cannot wait to see what you all are going to submit. I'm sure you're going to blow these things out of the water with a 0.59 coefficient of friction. But if you want to print some crazy stuff, saw blades, cubes, triangles, whatever, you submit it, I'll print it. Thank you all for putting up with my shenanigans. If you're digging this content, please head on over to my channel where you can like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date for more Get Wheel, more other pickles, picks, garbage. Don't forget that down in the description you can find the email getwheelsubs at gmail.com where you can send an email for an idea or an STL or an object file or any type of submission for 3D printing so that way we can print your wheel out and get it featured on the channel. Thanks everyone, have a great night and get wheel.